Welcome back to Grand Tactician the Civil War. This is the Confederate Campaign, Episode 7. We started this campaign in February 1861, and the date is now the 15th of October 1861. A brief overview of what's been going on here then. So, the Union has not blockaded us at all, which is something I commented on in the last few episodes. <laughs> so, our economy is looking pretty healthy, which is obviously nice. I mean, our credit rating could be better. It's a BBB+. Plus, but it kind of fluctuates between this and A-, minus, which, I mean, it, that's fine. Um, we didn't fight a battle in the last episode because there was just no battles happening, <laughs> basically. So uh, we have advanced up into Missouri and we're, we've got our Army of the West, the Trans-Mississippi Army under Beauregard, sitting at Springfield. If you're new to this channel, do please check out my playlists. I've got many different Grand Tactician playthroughs. Um, we've completed an 1864 Confederate campaign, a later start 1861 Confederate campaign and an 1861 Union campaign. You can find all that in my playlists on the channel. Um, I'll link a, I'll put a link to this playlist, so if you've missed previous episodes, in a pinned comment, and it'll be in the description, so you can go back and watch what you've missed. But basically, uh, I'm just going to roll through this really quickly uh, as w about where we're up to. So we have got our Trans-Mississippi Army here, which has got 34,500 men, give or take, under Beauregard. We have got our Central Army, um, the Army of Tennessee, which is pushed up into Kentucky. We've got two corps. Well, three, but I'll go through that in a minute. Second corps under Johnston. George Johnston, that is. Uh, William Hardy with the first corps. And we also have a pioneer unit, which is not actually attached to these. Uh, but we have... Sure, we've got a third corps. Oh, yes, we have. <laughs> so the Reserve Corps, which is kind of... I'm using for recruiting troops into... In the East, there's actually not a lot happening in the East. We did fight a couple of battles when the Union invaded Northern Virginia, but we rebuffed that, and they haven't really done much since. So we're kind of just holding the ground here. We've got Lee in charge of the Army of Northern Virginia uh, with somewhere around 50,000 men. He has worked in three corps as well. I quite like that three corps system, so the way I work it, usually I have two like fighting corps and one that sits back and uh, recruits and does other things. So that's Magruder's third corps, which is kind of the southern... The Southern Virginia District, uh, I call it. <laughs> but we also have an Eastern HQ down here under Cooper, which is just, again, for recruiting troops and a kind of last-ditch garrison for Richmond if we ever needed it. But if it comes down to that, then things are probably going pretty badly. Um, we've also got a Pioneer unit here, which I've put under Bragg just to give him a command, basically. And they are just building, building things for us, uh, to put it simply. And we have... The independent Corsair's Army of the Northwest. I say Corsair's; it's got six thousand men in it. So, but it's it, that's a decent little force to be holding there for now at this stage of the war. The problem we've got at the moment is actually weapons. We are very, very low on weapons. We've got hardly anything available. We've got some some guns available still that I ordered a while ago, but I've been doling them out. So there's actually not many. We've got nineteen twelve pound howitzers, twelve twenty four pound howitzers. And in all honesty, that's about it. We've got two 14-pounder Jameses, four uh, Parrots, 10-pounders, and not much else, if I'm perfectly honest. We have got Lawrence Rifles on order, so I have ordered 25,000 of those. But they're going to be another 42 days, so it's going to be probably 1862 before they see any action. Um, a handful of rifles here and there. Even Springfield Muskets, look, we only have, we've got less than 3,000, so we can't even arm a full brigade with Springfield Muskets. We have got some Augustine, Augustine maybe you say, I'm not sure. But we've got some of those on order as well. Let's see, we've got 10,000. So we're going to have 35,000 Austrian rifles available. The Augustine, Augustine rifle isn't quite as good as the Lawrence rifle, but it's better than what we've got. Being that we have mostly Springfield muskets and mixed muskets in our units. We've also got a bit of a shortage of officers. Um, There's not really anybody about. We've got a bunch of lieutenants who are going to have to be over-promoted, basically. Uh, and we've got this guy. Not sure why he's here. But anyway, we've got a Brigadier General, um, George H. Stewart. I suspect I probably promoted him and then maybe moved him off. I'm not sure why. Uh, but yeah, so he went from Captain to Brigadier General. So he's not really a Brigadier General. But, you know, it's, I don't think it makes that much difference, if we're being perfectly honest. But back to the economy. So the economy is in good shape. Let's just have a little look here. So we've got lots of trade happening. Like, like, and like I say, uh, these, I think these are the markets now. I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, but anyway, either, either way, 
our economy is looking pretty good. Workforce is a slight problem. We don't have that much available, but I mean, there's still plenty along here, along this river, along West Ch Chattanooga and places like that. Um, so what I've done is I have built a handful of industry, um, basically. Let's, let's have a look. So I've clicked on this, shortages and oversupply. So we've got lots and lots of oversupply of wood, basically. So wood is partly used in the construction of weapons. So let's see what it does. Artillery and ironworks, transport ships and ports, weapons and ironworks. So what I've done, <laughs> look, if you see the bottom of that tooltip there, stocks are bursting. So we've got lots and lots of wood here. We've also got lots of salt. So that's used to make provisions in factory and leather in factory. All that kind of stuff goes towards uniforms, I think. Uh, uniforms. <laughs> it goes towards like army supplies. But we anyway, we've got we've got lots here. We've got even got lots of coal. So what I've done is I've built a, a factory around here. And I have built another ironworks and bits and pieces like that. I've built a couple of farms as well, um, just to get the food production up a little. I've built a little bit over here in the Trans-Mississippi area. Not too much because actually there's not much out here. Um, and as always, supply is a real issue out here. There's, so there's, there's no real supply base. I mean, it's slightly, just ever so slightly um, darker than the standard color. So like this is obviously this red area has decent supply. Then there's nothing here. And then there's a bit over here. So I'm not sure how to actually get supply over here. Do we have to build a chain of depots, which obviously is expensive, or does it just happen kind of naturally if we build up the the little ports here at Little Rock, perhaps? Uh, I really don't know. And Helena, maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. We'll have a little experiment around with that, but we'll see where that goes. But that's enough blabbering from me now. I suspect we're going to see combat in Missouri, which, you know, that'll, that'll be welcome if he comes down and has a fight with us. Because... This army pulled out. It got 15,000 men. So if they combined, they'd have 35,000, which is kind of what we've got here. Uh, although that is also including the Arkansas district. But those troops are actually ready. Let's just have a look. Oh, that's Barksdale. I kept him back because he's defamed. So he's just staying here until he's not defamed anymore. <laughs> In terms of recruits available, we do have 35,000 available. They're kind of dotted around the different states. But I'm not going to recruit at the moment. I don't feel we need to, and it's expensive. Um, although we are starting to lag behind substantially in numbers now. We've got less than 160,000. He's got over 210,000. So that is, well, I mean, it's a thing. It's I don't know if it's a problem. I was going to say it's a problem, but it's not, it's not really. Not yet. <laughs> it might well become one, I suppose. But as far as I can see, he's pulled his army for the Kentucky out of Kentucky for some reason and moved the army to Mississippi in. It's a fair-sized army of 22,000 men, and the army of Kentucky has 18,000. Hardy has 32,800. And Joe Johnson has almost 15,000 men as well. We are a little short on guns in this army, though. Without really... Maybe we will recruit a couple of... A couple of artillery piece units, but, like, we haven't got anybody really to put in them. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, not, not anybody, uh, like, any actual guns to put in them is what I mean to say. As in, we have not got the equipment to hand out. Let's, let's well, let's go ahead. We'll, we'll order, uh, we'll, we'll order up a medium-sized artillery battalion from Kentucky. Let's give them a full white uniform. That should keep nice and clean while working the artillery pieces. But there we are. So under this uh, slightly crazy-looking dude, Whitfield. Uh, so they're going to be a little while. Seventeen days. So we'll we'll get them into Johnston's force, I guess, once they're there. We do have a couple of brigades ready, actually. Bushrod Johnston's brigade. Yeah, okay. I'm going to keep Robertson's brigade with Holmes in reserve. And I'm going to move Bushrod's brigade into here. That's uh, Stephen D. Lee's division in Johnston's Corps. And also there's Patrick Claiborne's division. And then we've got a cavalry brigade. Again, we've got no cavalry weapons to speak of at all, so... Nothing to give out for those guys, sadly. So a quick look at Hardy's core here. We've got Slack's division, almost 8,000 men in that. He's got some guns attached. Um, I've, I've made a separate artillery division just to keep the artillery together because it was getting quite difficult to maneuver the artillery separately. But I, I do like to have some artillery in some of the divisions. So we've got Slack's division. 
8,000 men, 11 guns. McBride with 10,300 men. So that's a quite large division with four brigades. We have Van Dorn's cavalry division, 5,500 men. But they're all poorly on, but I mean, that's still useful for the cavalry. We have Loring's division. Loring was wounded in a battle, uh, but he's back now and he's fine. 8,200 men. And then, like I say, we've got Polk's artillery. Johnson's corps. Lee's division with 7,700 men and 11 guns. And Claiborne's division, 7,600 men with 8 guns. Plus then that, uh, that cavalry brigade I was talking about. So, yeah, this is where we are. This is what's going on. We've got a, we've got a garrison fort here as well. And we are building a fort over in the kind of Fort Donaldson area in Fort Henry. So let's press play and let's see what's going down. We're working on a supply depot there. And we're building a hospital over here as well, actually, in the Trans-Mississippi area. So we can pull men back to the Arkansas District Command and they can heal up there, I guess. But Plus maybe the, the hospital might cover up to here once it's done. So he has got three armies kicking around in Missouri. He was worried because we advanced price up here, but due to a lack of supply, we had to pull back. We've got the River Scout 2 squadron here. I'm going to pull them up. I'm going to send them up here. I thought I already had, but maybe I didn't. Also, we now have ready... Not the Savannah squadron. We had ready uh, one of our frigates. So this fleet's looking rather healthy now with... One, two, three, five brigs and one frigate. And this steam frigate's almost ready. So when that's ready, I'm going to send those guys up to go and blockade some Union ports. Might as well. They aren't blockading us, so we'll blockade them. We could also try and take on this fleet. I've noticed a couple of fleets popping up here. So we've got the James River Squadron, or one, one ship. This flying flotilla has got 173 guns. So this could be a nice naval battle here if we make it happen. Other than that, we are blockading the Union up here, which is, like, craziness, really, isn't it? Although, actually, it says not blocked. Well, I'm not sure why that is. We'll come back to this and have a look in a minute to see if they're blocked. They should be blockaded, because we are blockading them. I, mean, I know it's just a small fleet, but still. Uh, so he hasn't actually moved on. Okay, so we've finished the Springfield Depot. We're building a second depot here. So we're going to have two depots, which hopefully... Oh, I think I've actually upgraded that one as well. So again, I mean, so we do have some artillery pieces, but no artillery ammunition. We've got forage for the horses, at least, and a few horses, some provisions. No small arms ammunition. So it's a problem. Like, it's a pro real problem getting supplies still to this side of the, of the uh, campaign map. Like, if you look at our ammunition here, we're down to 67% artillery ammunition. That's... That's not good. So I wonder if maybe we build a market here. That might improve the flow of goods somehow, but I, I don't know. But we can try. It can't do any harm, I don't think. So <laughs> let's just let's go ahead and we'll pop a market here at Little Rock. Construct it at the cost of $10,000. All right. Uh, even though it says construction cost $971,000. I'm not sure why why it said that but uh, we'll take it again I don't know if it makes any difference whatsoever to the supplies traveling maybe I need to have a, a look into what actually makes supply movement happen let the time go a couple of days here I'm just going to see if this is blockaded now just to see the 38th army he's just kind of army to Susquehanna he's just kind of, he's just kind of spamming armies up here for some reason I, I don't really know why but yeah they're blockaded now Blocked 11%, so not exactly uh, <laughs> not exactly blocked up tight, but, you know, um, tighter than they'd like, I'm sure. Now, so they are putting more ships in there. Look, there's, there's two ships in the James River Squadron, too, now. I'm considering sending somebody to try and capture Fort Monroe so we can control this whole inlet. I wonder if Cooper and the Eastern HQ could do that. Maybe 3,200 of them, but we're not really using them. I'm going to give it a go and just see, see if that does anything. Not that I didn't ever intended to use these guys for combat, but we might as well. If it fails, then it fails and we'll pull back. Uh, Magruder's almost finished the fort here at Fredericksburg, which is nice. Okay, so these guys have also finished the telegraph line. I wanted to run a telegraph line up this way, and we will do that. Oh, actually, I think he's connected here. 
that's what that line means. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. He's connected. He's connected there. Interesting. So, and there's telegraph line there, but I, I don't think that's actually... Is that connected to anything? I don't think so. So maybe we'll go... Yeah, we'll build we'll build a telegraph post here. And then that should hopefully connect Charleston, uh, Virginia. I was going to say West Virginia, but it's not. So, yeah, it's in the range. So that should connect it, I think. I think, anyway, we'll, we'll see. Building a mill here for food production. And a farm. I've placed that on this side of the river to see if we can get some provisions up this way. So the depot here. Oh, so now we're getting a little bit of ammunition through at least. Some, well, a few weapons, some uniforms. I mean, not much, but it is trickling in, which is obviously handy. Uh, so what we might do here is we might let him finish building this depot for us, and then we're going to go and attack him with his 20,000 men, 21,000 men. Because we should be finished our depot before that. I mean, well, we've already got our depot. Lynch at destination. I'm sure that was that fleet. So we're going to set him to blockade as well, I think. Yeah, we might, we might as well, while he's here. It's only three little ships, but, you know. And if we move him up slightly, I think we can also blockade Covington. Maybe even Cincinnati. In fact, yeah, let's move him up a little bit further. I think that should then encompass all of this. All these three ships blockading all those ports. Also, the little march will get uh, Cooper some experience. The Union passes the Tariff Act. Okay. Something's constructed. Fort Ewell. Nice. Where's Fort Ewell? Fort Ewell is this one. So I'm going to put some guys in there to garrison that. Let's give uh, let's give it to this political officer, Lieutenant Charles Clark from Mississippi. And even though we are running low on troops, we're going to put some in here because it's quite an important little point to hold. Um, let's do 1,500 men from Maryland. It'll take them a little while to get there, but we're not in a massive rush for those guys. Nice yellow jackets for them. <laughs> uh, this guy's actually not a bad commander, so I'm going to keep him possibly for another command if we can. Oh, actually, if we can. Uh, there's another, another political from Maryland. Oh, well, that's that's fine. We could do with more support in Maryland. And those guys are actually from Maryland, so that's all good. Do we have the ability to make some more? Yeah, so let's get, we'll get some more guys from Maryland in there. Some guns. Just a small unit, 120. So, yeah, that's nice. Yes, what's he like? No, he's... I don't want him in there. If we can get somebody worse than that in, that would be nice. Uh, Frank Huger. Or is he Hugey like that other guy? Don't know. But it's not him anyway. Oh, Edward Johnson, he's there. He's a, he's not a bad commander, actually, overall. Got some decent leadership skills. And not for here, but for another command. Some of these guys aren't looking too bad, actually, if I'm honest. Except the only problem is that these guys are lieutenants, of course, and need to be promoted up. Uh, Henry Heth, of course. Prominent-ish. Uh, this guy looks a bit more like it. <laughs> there we are. So that's going to be a 1,670 man garrison for this fort, plus obviously the guns that they have in there and stuff. So we're seeing a little lull in combat, but that's okay. I mean, it's October the 23rd, so soon we'll be heading into winter quarters. Um, so maybe we'll try and go ahead with a little push before then, if we can. Particularly a little push into, uh, into Missouri is what I'm thinking. Since we're still building supply and we're kind of waiting for things to finish in the center. So yeah, these guys are actually completely out of supply. Maybe we'll push forward before they finish this depot. Let's just take a quick look at our army before we do that. <laughs> so Price will be doing the majority of the fighting, of course. Um, this is our little engineering HQ. Uh, Pioneer Corps, I've called it. I mean, they're just building our stuff, and they're kind of a reserve force, uh, as well as Pillow being the recruiting force. So this is like our main fighting army in Missouri. And they are not very well armed, if I'm honest. Mostly mixed in Springfield muskets. Or some reboard muskets. But they've got, actually got Springfield musketoons. 
14 pounder James's for this artillery unit. Yeah, a lot of six pounders. I'm going to give Springfield muskets out of this larger brigade. 2,100 men. Well, unless we've got a bigger one. Let's have a look. Whoops. Ah, yes. Brian's brigade. So they've got 2,800 men. I'm going to give them Springfield muskets. Might as well. I've got 2,900 left. So let's give it out of this larger brigade. Uh, where are they gone? There. Uh, it won't let us. Upgrade not possible. Why not? Maybe it's too close in numbers. Okay, so not for them then. <laughs> right, Frost. Frost, you can have them. Fine. Just giving out some more 12-pound howitzers there. Ford Gracie is complete. All right, cool. So that's this one. I'm going to move these guys down into Jackson, and they are going to build us a uh, another telegraph line. Got a project available. Hoping for some weapons, that would be nice. Some legacy rifles, that would be also welcome. Uh, trade warfare. Alright, well, we'll invest in it anyway. It's not what I wanted. <laughs> but it's fine. Okay, so I'm actually, I'm going to push up here. We're going to Go on the offensive with price. Let's do it. These pioneer guys are going to stay back, but I'm going to move them up a little bit. Perhaps they'll get in range of this battle. Eastern HQ is preparing the siege. My men are approaching Fort Monroe. I am deploying and preparing field works. There's a light exchange of artillery fire along the lines with light casualties. I will proceed with the siege until advised otherwise. Yeah, okay, fine. Let's just uh, have a quick look at that. I've no idea how that'll go at all. It, it could be a disaster, I suppose. But it's only a small garrison, so who knows? But the sieges are a bit unpredictable in this game. Well, they certainly can be. Ooh, we've got a perk for Stuart Corps. I'm going to go with Ambulance Corps. I like that one. Uh, Jackson's Corps doesn't have a perk. And the Third Corps doesn't either. I'm actually, I'm going to pull Magruder back to Washington, and I think we're going to build a fort at Washington. Well, I keep saying Washington. I mean Richmond, of course. So Price is on the move here. Let's take one last quick look at his equipment, uh, his ammunition. Make sure he's raring to go. Well, raring to go might be a stretch, but he's back up to 73% artillery ammunition, which is a little better than it was. It does mean we only leave 5,000 men to guard Springfield. McGrude has arrived at his destination, so I'm going to build a fort there, like I said, at Richmond. Not that I'm particularly worried that the AI is going to push on Richmond, certainly not just yet, but I'm sure they will eventually. But either way, if uh, we should build a fort, that's 18 million. I thought the fort construction cost had come down, but maybe not. Or maybe it's not save game compatible. I'm really not sure. 55% chance of victory for that siege at Fort Monroe. So better than half at least. Maybe we can round this out with a battle. I'm not sure if we will, but they might pull back. It's the 30th of October, so almost in November. So it's almost winter quarter sort of time. Aha. Also, the Pioneer Corps can actually be involved in this if need be. This is actually an army under McDowell. So we well have the numbers on him. And the guns. So he's got about 20,000 men, 16,000 infantry, 4,000 cavalry, and 14 guns. That's the estimate. I mean, it's obviously not going to be 100% accurate, but I bet it's somewhere close to that. Let's uh, go ahead and fight this battle. And we'll round out the episode with this battle, I guess. It is November. Oh, no, it's still October. October the 30th, 1861. The Battle of Lebanon, Missouri. Feels strange fighting McDowell and uh, Beauregard out in the Western Coast, oh, Western Coast, Western Theatre. But I quite like it. We are to attack the enemy. I kind of thought we would have to. Wire Road, so that's the objective. But where he's going to be deployed, I don't know. But we're going to cross. I guess we'll have to cross at these bridges. Let's get out of HQ view a moment and have a look. 
Are there fords actually? Well, yeah, we'll cross at the fords. We'll assess things and see where he's set up. I mean, the last couple of times actually I fought a battle, he wasn't set up at the objective. But hopefully he will be uh, and not just be out of randomizing somewhere. <laughs> All right, so we start with the uh, Borogod on the field. March columns, that's fine. So these dudes are supposed to be in March column, but when I've moved them, they've come out of March column. Let's just let's check this out. Yeah, that's better. Which means they move a little quicker on the on the road. Okay, so we're going to advance, and we'll see what's what. We'll check out the lay of the land. Do we have no cavalry in this army? Oh, we do. Of course, we do. Steel's division. We've got a whole cavalry division. So they're going to go ahead and have a look for us. Let's get started. I'm going to send Steel's division forward towards Sharp. Or Sharp's cabin, maybe? Sharp's farm. I'm not entirely sure. I guess it's a farmhouse. I'm going to move Pierce as well. McLaws. I might actually send McLaws up this way. And send his division up towards this top region. Colloc. This way, son. Heinemann with his guns. And then let's see what's what. I think if I was him, I'd probably set up kind of here, behind the objective. So I would come forward and then would fight in this open ground. But I'm not sure what McDowell will do. McDowell vs. Borgard in Missouri. I expected the cavalry to arrive first. I give them orders at first. And uh, they've got horses, but apparently uh, it's not happening that way. So Lafayette McLaws, his his division's in place here. I'm going to press them straight on this way. I'm just kind of swinging them around. I'm going to bring them up over here. I suspect the unions it's got to, they've got to be uh, built up here somewhere. I'm going to send Evans' brigade across to have a look for us. While the rest of our guys are getting cohesion back and resting up, basically. It's like, it's just, it's 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 an absolute ridiculous that this, that Evans couldn't see that there's a whole army lined up here behind parapets or whatever it is, uh, breastworks, yet he will still carry on with that order before pulling out, and this unit will get end up broken, no doubt. But this is actually a decent position from the AI. Oh, he's actually pulled out, so that rant was for nothing. <laughs> so this is actually not a bad position from him at all. This is a decent defensive position, and kind of what I would have done as well. Somewhere around that anyway, or I would have formed a bit further on. But this is a nice position from him. However, we do have the numbers on him, so hopefully we can do something different here. So we're going to bring Pierce up onto this flank. We're going to cross Pierce's men over, but we're going to set up our artillery and some infantry. Oh, they're going to come a bit too close there, really, McLaws' division. Well, that's okay, actually. No, that's fine. They're going to march past and we'll form up here, and then we're going to cross, and we'll try and swing them around behind. Again, we've got plenty of time here. I wonder what kind of guns he's got. Hopefully we can capture some. Let's unlimber these 
Oh, he's actually got eight James rifles. I don't, I don't know how we've got managed that, but I won't complain. Uh, but we can't get a shot on them anyway. Perhaps we can move them up onto this hill. Let's give that a try. So I think once we've got this artillery division in place, maybe we'll place them up here. There's no rush at all for us. None at all. In fact, we even get more reinforcements. Well, we are due some more anyway. Right, so McLaws guys are here. They were a bit disrupted, so we'll give them a little time to get in place. And like I say, there's no rush at all. Let's speed it up. So somehow their morale's higher than ours, even though it said they were on uh, suffering with attrition and stuff, which obviously would make a lot of difference to our morale, but it doesn't affect the AI in the same way, it seems. So Heinemann's guns are in place. The Jameses are firing. Good. So I'm going to... Let's uh, let's unlimber Heinemann. Well, let's get them up on this hill. McCulloch almost in place. His uh, units are training on training regular, so that's that's pretty good. The rest are all on poor. McLaws in position, intact, and well rested. Excellent. I'm going to give these guys long range orders. Our guns are opening up. They're just six pounders, but that's okay. Nice, this is a good position up on this hill, actually. Twelve pound howitzers, six pound of field guns, twelve pound howitzers, and six pound of field guns. Supported by the fourteen pound James rifles and these six pounder guns as well. Excellent. So, PS, I'm going to. Get him over the river. It's getting dark already. It's that time of year for it. <laughs> so they, they haven't really lost many men. They've lost 30. This bombardment's more about sort of... More about giving them that uh, under fire debuff, I guess. So we'll, we'll press this attack in the morning, I think, uh, because it's getting a bit late already. It's almost 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., and I think that might be the time that this battle ends. Yeah, 7 o'clock, so I thought it would be. Let's see if he redeploys. I mean, surely he will. I don't think we're going to do anything, if I'm honest. Uh, Smith arrives, that's that second court. I don't feel like we need to set up defences. I don't really feel like we need to do much at all. We'll move Smith up and then we'll press the attack. And that means that these guys will also lose their first battle uh, debuff. Which obviously is nice. Because to, in all honesty, we shouldn't really need Smith's men. But they'll be there if we need them. So let's press play and see what see what he's done. See if he's moved himself or if he's still in the same place. Well, let's, let's reposition these guys first. Just moving those Jameses up on the hill as well. Gives us a little scope for advancing with the infantry. Now, for some reason, they can't get a shot off there. That's annoying. That's okay. So we'll put them there. I'm going to detach them once the battle starts. Right, let's go. They, they stay in place. That's good. So I'm just going to quickly detach the artillery from the divisions. Trebu, Traub, Traub. Don't know. Detach. So we're going to detach them. And yeah, we're going to press the attack now. On day two, we're going to swing McLaws around the back. And oh, he's actually got troops up here as well. And we're going to attack with PS.
a hell of a fire going down on this brigade. Which we can't actually see at the moment, but that's okay. That is a lot of fire, actually. Pretty cool. <laughs> Quite kind of him to deploy there, right? In the shadow of this hill. Right, we're going to swing up and around. See if he does anything. Surely he's going to move these guys, but he might not. I'm going to send Steel's cavalry over here, and they can come forward and support if need be. We're going to pull Pierce further up the flank. I'm going to cross Buckner here. But we're going to leave McCulloch in place. He's going to push forward slightly once the attack goes to hopefully keep some men pinned here. Again, all this firing, not much in the way of casualties. In fact, we've lost more, or almost more than him. I guess because some of our guys must have come under fire somehow, but that's all right. So McLaws is pulling up over here. He's not actually done anything about it. Reboard muskets for Gardner, so it's at least got a bit of range. But they're jerking around there in the cornfield. Cohesion failing. We're going to let them line up and give them a moment. Blowing that house to kingdom come. <laughs> oh, I like that little feature, the leaves falling, because it's fall or autumn as we see here. So we're disrupted and winded. We'll let them rest up. It's only 9 a.m. We've still got hours left. It's important to coordinate this right, so uh, I'm trying not to make the same mistakes I usually make, and that is to rush in with things. Quite an effective fire, actually, if I'm honest, but it's keeping them busy. Okay, so McLaws is almost ready to push in. I'm going to give Pierce's division a long range order, so we're going to press on this flank. Okay, the McLaws, let's do it. PS as well, push in. Going to advance a little bit with Buckner. Some more guns coming under Smith. So we're going to move them forward. Now I'm going to move McCulloch's men forward. They're going to come under artillery fire, no doubt. But it's basically to pin pin them in place.
Should we move these guns down to see if we can get any sort of fire close range into them on the flank? Exhausted. How can they be exhausted? Okay, so this is one part of the attack pushing in. Disappointing that these guys are exhausted. I mean, uh, very tired now, but still. See if Feel can get a shot off. I don't think it's going to be him in the end range, sadly. Not sure why Henry McCulloch's brigade has suffered this badly and why they are nervous and flashing. We've routed some of their troops, they've only lost 300 men. Well, we'll see. This brigade here is still fighting with 650 losses, even though this has got to be their first battle, I think. But no effect on their morale or anything like that. Ah, oh, there they go. Okay. And we can see some movement happening here. So he's adjusting his troops slightly, but I think because he thinks I'm going to push across with McCulloch. We'll find out in a moment. McCulloch broken. Yeah, that's disgraceful. Very poor performance there, if I say so myself. Like it's, it's bollocks, really. Why would he break? He's only got 400 men. I mean, I know 400 men, obviously. 400 casualties is not to be sniffed at, but they, the Union forces are losing way more than that, and it doesn't seem to affect them at all. 750 casualties there, and they were just broken, and they were getting fired on from three sides. But it is what it is, and that's okay. Well, it'd be nice if you started firing. We're gonna let Gardner's guys uh, recover slightly. What are you doing? What on earth are you doing? What on earth are these people doing? Why would Clark advance that far forward to fire? He's, he's got rifles. So what should have been a really easy battle... Oh, I wounded in action. Who? P.S. Oh. So what should have been a really easy battle has turned into an absolute shambles. He's very tired again. How, how can that be? You've marched 20 paces.
So Armistad's men aren't actually fighting at all here. They're not they're not doing anything. It's just they're in melee because it's a little bit spazzing out. What's he doing? What's going on here? What? Why are my guns here? What on earth is happening? Okay, this is, I think this might be the worst battle I've ever had on this game. What, what is going on? Broken, Armstead's men didn't fight, I mean... This is honestly, this is this is so infuriating to watch. And like, wh what the hell are they doing? Why were they over the other side of the river? So we might need Smith's men after all, since uh, this was an absolute total, uh, there's no other word for it, but shambles. With, I feel like the AI, I mean the computer, the AI opponent here has cheated. What the hell was all that? Why were my guns advancing? It just doesn't even make any sense. Anyway, that's enough complaining. I'm going to push forward with McCulloch here, and hopefully this is the final uh, death blow for them. Come on, let's get over there. Where's Clark gone? Oh, he's running away. So we had problems here. We had Armistead's brigade simply standing there pretending they were in melee, but they were not in melee. Um, Gardner's men were exhausted after marching, I don't know, 200 yards? The enemy's retreating. I mean, yeah, but... Still, this was not a good battle. Second Brigade is wiped out. 2,300 men. Cool. That's something at least. But, yeah, 
I, I won't lie, I did not enjoy this battle. I, I... At least it's a victory, a major victory now as well with those prisoners, I suppose. So at least there is that. Well, I mean, we lost almost 5,000 men and 10 guns because that gun battery felt like advancing, but, you know, it's, it's fine. It's... But, again, like I say, I'll be lying if I said that that was a good battle or that I enjoyed that battle. It was crap. I feel like there's a bit of cheating going on from the AI. Some of that maneuvering that my men did was terrible, but maybe that's because the commanders didn't experience. Maybe I give them crap orders whatever Kern walk has become famous and is an inspiration to his men cool evans has fallen in disgrace excellent another disgrace general for stupid mistake but never mind the disgraced mechanic needs fixed i don't think evans would be disgraced for that i mean he lost a few men and made a stupid decision on moving or maybe it was where i clicked i, I really don't know screw it Colonel Evans loses face. Let's have a little read of the battle. Officer lost report. Wounded. McLaws and PS2 division commanders. Really? Anyway, the Battle of Lebanon has ended with the Department of the West retreating in panic. My commanders earned us a total victory with the enemy army running for their lives. The enemy has reportedly suffered 7,780 casualties, 563 killed, 3,527 captured. Morale is believed to be stable. I don't think we've got capacity for all those prisoners. 1009 missing okay that was disgraceful <laughs> but we've got an ambulance call perk for these guys now at least but that was absolutely disgraceful i am ashamed to say i commanded that battle never mind let's have a quick look here mclaws wounded ps wounded Oh, his stats are right down. Is that because he's wounded? We'll we'll see, I suppose. Oh yeah, McClaws is the same. Unless they're both just that bad. Uh, I think Walker's earned himself a promotion, so I'm going to just replace Walker as the brigade commander. Let's give it to this guy. And he can take over from McClaws. P.S. I need someone else for him as well. Who have we got? Anybody here that's any good? This guy's already a brigadier general, but I mean, he's not very good. <laughs> Jones, not great. McIntosh, he's got decent leadership, but that's about it. Clark, well, I've seen worse. And Gardner, he could be a contender here. Yeah, let's go with Gardner. I'm going to replace Gardner as commander here. Uh, Wharton, yeah, he looks okay. There you go, Wharton. Got yourself a promotional lieutenant to colonel. And Gardner is going to get himself a division. So at least that's that fixed. Oh, Evans has disgraced himself. Uh, it doesn't actually show you, but I think it will once we press play. Let's just do that. No? Maybe he hasn't disgraced himself fully. Uh, four guns. But actually, that means we can upgrade these guns then, because we've got something to put in. <laughs> Give him Napoleons. We've got five of those. There you go, son. Got some Napoleons. These are the guys who advanced into the enemy. I, 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 I don't really know why they did that. I don't. I honestly don't understand why that happened. Oh, Heinen, terrible. Archer, poor as well. Actually, all these guys look really bad. Wheeler's pretty decent. Borogard stats also not great, actually. Neither are prices, but well, I guess it is what it is. That was not a fun battle to fight, honestly. I'll be honest with you, that was not fun. I don't know if, it, hopefully it'll be fun to watch, but it wasn't fun to fight. Hardy's got nothing here. They've got nothing here at all. No provisions, no forage, low on ammunition. Even though they haven't fought a battle or anything. Uh, how's Johnson looking? A little better, but not much better. I, I find it crazy that... Surely they can't be... 
This is a large depot which is full to the brim of things, but they can't get the supplies like 100 miles up the road, if, if it's even 100 miles. Anyway, we're 10 days away from Militia Act 3. We're still holding our defense line in Virginia. Our attack into Kentucky stalled a little. We're waiting on supplies. We've got to build up a depot at Bowling Green at least, and then we'll push on, I think. But that'll be for after the winter. Uh, I think I don't really fancy a. Uh, I don't really fancy a winter campaign. Not in Kentucky. Let's have a look at the intelligence report. According to our intelligence source sources and an analysis, the federal government is currently discussing the following policy: government funding one. Should they already had that? Uh, the relations with Spain are not percent right. An estimated 15,000 men have been recruited in 12 brigades. The following units have been formed. The 38th Army, we've seen them, supposed to operate in Pennsylvania. The following fleets have been raised. The James River Squadron 2, Baltimore Squadron. 85 new ships have started construction in shipyards. So they are definitely building on there. The, federal, the morale of the Federal Army is currently at 97%. Our intelligence indicates the enemy is carrying out offensive operations. The current rating of our na nation is BBB+. Plus. This is the financial report, which is good. Our debt remaining remained unchanged compared to the last month. Currently, our liabilities amount to $110 million. The current economy cycle is expansion with the wealth of our population mediocre and increasing compared to the previous month. Cool. Tax revenue increased by $2.7 million. Last month, zero buildings were constructed. Really? Total export volume in the last month was 17 million, while 129 million worth of goods was imported. And so on. Our economy lacks livestock, food, machine parts. Our stocks are full of cotton, wood, and fish. Right. All right, then. So we fought a poor battle in Missouri, a frustrating battle. We lost more men than we should have done, but we did push another one of their armies out, and it opens up slightly but there are still two more armies in here 23,000 men and 15,000 men so that is not to be sniffed at and we will have to reinforce Beauregard with some troops and we'll get on that in the next episode but for now whatever you're doing I hope you have a great day I hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please leave a like leave a comment let me know what you thought of it and I'll catch you in the next one ta for now